the Cuban people, especially those who lost family members, people who do not know what happened to their family members because they may have died in the Florida streets trying to get to the land of freedom, will never be able to forgive not only the American media, but any media that for so long refused to see what reality was about. After I arrived from Cuba in 1967, I began reading the newspaper and watching television in the United States. I noticed that what they were saying about my own country was very far from the reality that I lived in Cuba and very far from the reality of the Cuban people that they are living in Cuba. I was getting very upset about the US media coverage about my own country. Back in the 1990s, I had the idea of doing a series of documentaries that actually portray the reality of Cuba from the Cuban-American or the Cuban perspective. Back in 1994, I started filming the first documentary of my series covering Cuba. And it's a series of interviews of Cuban Americans, people who arrived to this country in 1959, 1960, 61, just in the beginning of the revolution. People who knew very well the way Cuba was before the revolution. The U.S. media is rendering a disservice by not telling the truth about Cuba. What I want to convey to the people is the real story of Cuba what Cuba was before Castro, to try by all means to reach the American people so they try to understand why Cuban Americans are the way they are and why they are so passionate about Cuba. They are so passionate because the only thing that they want is freedom and democracy for the Cuban people. And after that documentary, it was followed by covering Cuba to the next generation which are Cuban Americans born in this country or came to this country when they were little. They are just American, they speak English very well like any other American. But because of their youth, they can communicate and reach the younger generation of Americans. After that documentary, I did a documentary about the story of Elian Gonzalez. The American people never understood that actually in Cuba, the parents do not have rights over the children. It's the state that controls the education. Returning Elian to Cuba, it was not returning Elian to his father. It was returning the boy to the state and the state does with him whatever they please. As the Cuban Americans said in that opportunity, Actually, Elian has become the poster child of the revolution. After that, I was approached by a gentleman who discovered the connection between the Elian saga and an American corporation that actually, apparently, it was involved financing the whole operation of returning Elian to Fidel Castro. I go behind this scene and expose who were the people involved in returning Elian to Cuba and all of them were directly connected to this corporation. After I finished covering Cuba for The Rats Below is when I decide to do a documentary about something that I haven't been uh, touched completely in a documentary before which is uh, something that has been happening in Cuba that is called an act of repudiation. This is like a, a mob of people that they are organized, controlled and ordered by the Castro regime to harass citizens in order to intimidate them. Uh, actually, many people think that the uh, act of repudiation starts uh, during the Mariel era in the 1980s. No, actually they date back to 1959 the first thing they did was the people that went to church in 1959. After they came out outside, there was a mob insulting them. Then that thing had been perfected through the years. And in 1980s, it was used at the maximum. Now we are in 2007, and this act of affiliation is still going on in Cuba. I choose this particular person and this particular family to tell that story because they are all artists and that will show what they can do to an artist in Cuba. I want to show also that there is no separation between politics and art in Cuba. They are very well connected and they have been connected ever since Fidel Castro did that 
uh, famous speech uh, in 1961 or 62 than he said, with the revolution, everything, without the revolution, nothing. And from that specific moment, the arts has been used as a tool of the revolution for propaganda. And whoever deviates from that, then becomes a known person in Cuba, the doors are closed, and uh, that person cannot uh, succeed as an artist, cannot perform, cannot travel, cannot do anything in that field because everything is government control and all this position, all this thing is dominated by the government. So that is my last documentary and uh, I'm working now in the next one in covering Cuba 6 and then maybe covering Cuba 7, who knows. I wish the Castro revolution is over. I can go and do other things but I, because I am an artist, I am not a political person, I really don't like politics very much even though we have to do something about it because we are a victim of politics. But uh, I would like to do other things. I have other plans and uh, I'm doing this as a duty because I feel that I have a duty as a Cuban American. I hope that you like this series and you understand the need of Cuban Americans to tell this story the way it is.